All right, in this video, I'm gonna look at how we can do um, some process level parallelization for some computation. And uh, we're gonna be doing that with the multi-processing uh, library that comes built into Python. And um, in that uh, library, there's this thing called a process pool. Um, a pool is kind of this general word for a collection of either threads or processes uh, that do work. So um, you can imagine each process is some kind of worker um, you'll send work to that pool and then various uh, tasks with them that might accomplish it. Then you get answers back. Now, uh, this style of programming is going to be very similar to some things that um, we've done before, although they might be kind of some odd ways of doing things. So I'm going to review some stuff uh, first, in particular the uh, Python map function and list comprehensions. And, uh, and so really, I'm going to be starting with this piece of code here, which is pretty simple and writing it in five different ways. And the fifth way will actually use multiple processes. Okay, so you can see that, um, what am I doing? I have these numbers here, um, and then I wanna double each of them, which would be two, four, six. And so I'm gonna produce that in this doubles list. Um, how do I do that? Well, I'm just looping over for x and nums, and then appending double uh, to the doubles list. So I do that. Uh, hopefully that's pretty self-explanatory. And, um, and so there's other ways we could do it. Um, this kind of pattern of having a loop in order to build a list uh, has a shortcut called the list comprehension, which we've uh, seen before, but I think is always worth reviewing. And so in this case, I wanna create a doubles list again, like before. Um, but what I'm gonna do is rather than write this on multiple lines, I'm gonna copy this loop piece like this. I'm gonna put that loop um, inside of the list. And, um, and then uh, before that, before that piece, I have to put um, kind of the value that I want to add to the list. So I'd be copying this piece from here, right down here, like so. And, um, and it turns out that that does exactly the same thing. I just signed out kind of a shorter version. This is generally gonna be preferred uh, because well, it's one line of code instead of four up here. Okay, so that's good. Um, another thing we can do is, um, we can apply the same function to everything in, in the list, right? And this is actually gonna be a little bit more cumbersome, but um, so it's not that usually recommended, uh, but it's not horrible to understand. And it's gonna be pretty similar to what we're gonna do at the end where we have multiple processes. So it's kind of a nice bridge in terms of understanding that. So for this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say doubles equals, and, um, and then I'm gonna call map function. And for this, I have to have a function reference and, and then my, my original numbers, just like that. And, um, and so for this function reference, I think what I may actually do is I'm going to say, uh, let's create an anonymous function using lambda. So I'm going to say lambda x colon something, something, something. And, um, and so I'm defining a function here and each value in nums in turn is going to get passed to x. So first x will be one, it'll be two, and it'll be three. And then here is what I'm going to return, right? So, so what, what am I returning? Well, it's just x times two. So I copy this and paste that down here. And um, if I run that, you're actually going to see that I get this map object, uh, which is a generator. And so I could do things like this. I could say next and try to pull values out of it. Uh, but to get the same behavior as before, maybe what I'll do is I'll take this generator object that I get back and convert that to a list. Okay, so um, this is a little bit clunkier than this, right? But it's going to get us closer to this final, final product. And hopefully you can see how it has the same uh, result. Map just says run a function that takes x and returns two times x, everything in nums, right? Okay, so what if we want to do the same thing, uh, but without the lambda function? And, uh, and I think that's helpful because, you know, lambdas can, like, even though they're like kind of not doing anything that complicated, like the syntax uh, is a little weird to look at, right? So I can, I can get rid of this and I'm gonna have to have my function reference here again. And so let me, um, let me define a function that I'm gonna call multiply by two. And that's gonna, well, well, actually, let me just do this. Let me show you how this kind of relates to this up here, All right? So, you know, it's going to take something and return something. And so I want mult2 to be just like this lambda function. So I can see, okay, well, it takes x 
and uh, and it returns x times two. Okay, and and so now when I'm doing this here, I can just pass in a malt of two, and uh, and guess what? I get the same same thing again because malt two is the same as this lambda function. Just another way of of kind of accomplishing the same thing. Okay, all of that has been uh, just kind of running in a single process. Let's try to create some new processes and um, a pool of processes. And you can see I've already from multiprocessing.pool import, imported this pool class, right? So I'm going to be doing that. A uh, pool class, it turns out, is a, um, a context manager. So I can say with pool um, as, uh, I guess I'll call it P, uh, like that. Um, down here, I can actually call this same thing, right? I can say this, I can do my map again. Um, but, but instead of calling the general map function, I need to call the map method within the pool. So pools have different methods. This is the most important one uh, for you to know, right? And, and the cool thing about this too is that it's not returning some goofy generator. Um, it's already returning a list, so I don't need to copy that part. Um, but I would like to put that in my doubles variable. So I'm going to do that, and um, and let me actually print off what my what my doubles are here, and I see I got the same uh, result. But what was cool this time is that uh, this computation was actually done in a separate process. Now, when you're having a pool, one of the most important things to know is how many processes are in it, and I can specify, right? So I could say, well, I want you know one process or I want to have 100 processes. Uh, you can see that's taking a while to create that pool. Um, and it's a little bit silly, right? Because I only have three pieces of work. Why would I want 100 processes to do it? Right, so I probably wouldn't want more than uh, three. Um, so what happens if I don't specify like I did originally? Well, in that case, it's taking a default. And that default is how many cores I have. So if I import OS, I say os.cpu out. <clears throat> it turns out that I'm running on my virtual machine, which only has one core. So this whole idea of actually using a pool of processes is a little bit silly in this example, right? Because why would I want multiple processes if I'm just kind of doing computation and I only have one core to do that computation on, right? So one of the things that um, I'll want you to think about is whenever you're introducing pools, actually time your code and make sure you're making it faster. I've seen so many cases uh, where people hope to add uh, parallelism and to make things faster, and they actually end up making it a lot slower. Now, I'm going to be giving examples in, in kind of subsequent videos where we do make it a lot faster, but for now, let's just um, time this. I'm going to say, okay, this is going to be a pool of 10, and, um, and uh, let me time both of these. I think I already imported time up at the top, so I can say, <clears throat> um, for this one, I'll say, P zero equals time dot time. This is the you know this is the solution that doesn't have multiple processes. I grab that and um, it's like so, and uh, and then I'm gonna get milliseconds, which is t one minus t zero. That would give me seconds um, times one thousand is milliseconds. Around that, and I see it takes you know 0 0.07 milliseconds. So that's very fast actually. Let me see how it works with my with my process pool. I'm going to run that there, and um, and then do the same computation afterwards, and uh, and then when I'm all done, I want to look at that again. I run that, <clears throat> and I see that takes almost 200 milliseconds, one fifth of a second, way way slower than this. And and if I create even more more threads, it's going to be worse, right? Uh, maybe if I create 100 again. It's taking probably you know almost a sec, a little over a second to do that, right? So be careful, measure it. It takes time to create new processes, and so unless you have a lot of work to do, um, for example, maybe you're multiplying a huge matrix by something, it's not worth it, right? Don't do it for these small computations. So this is just kind of the mechanics of it, but I wouldn't do this in practice.